Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving quadratic equations by factoring. In the previous lessons, uh, what we did was just factor a simplified form. In this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is solving, so we should get answers like x equals some value. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is solve a single linear equation. So if x minus 2 is equal to 0, uh, algebra would suggest that after we add 2 to both sides, x is equal to 2. Okay, that's a solution. Or if 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, uh, after we do our algebra, we get 2x is equal to negative 3. We should get, finally, that x is equal to negative 3 halves. Uh, at some point in what we're doing today, we're going to get a factored form equal to 0 because we are factoring or solving quadratics, which will give us two linear uh, terms. So each term, whether this is a or b, one of those terms has to equal 0 in order for this product to be 0. So in other words, we're going to get two solutions here. One is when x minus 2 is equal to 0, which you already know uh, after we solve will be x is equal to 2. So that's one of our solutions to this problem. And we already know that for 2x plus 3 to equal 0 from this previous linear example, uh, we would get a solution of negative 3 halves. So 2x is equal to negative 3, so x would equal to negative 3 halves. Those would be the solutions. So the big issue is today, how do we create this factored form, and what are the important key ideas here in order to come up with these solutions? Uh, first example I'm going to do pretty quickly and just verify the solution. We're going to solve this by factoring. So if I factor this trinomial, uh, this is a simple trinomial to factor where ax squared plus bx plus c uh, equals 0 and a is equal to 1, is just going to be x, and it should be plus 7 and minus 3, because we're looking for two values that add to 4 and multiply to negative 21. So our two solutions to this problem, so we're solving by factoring, is negative 7 and positive 3. Okay. Uh, in order to check this, all we do is substitute our solutions into the original equation and see if it works. Uh, so in this particular case, does negative 7 squared plus 4 times negative 7 minus 21 equal 0? Let's find out. Does 49 minus 28 minus 21 equal 0? Yes, absolutely. So negative 7 is a solution. Or if I want to check 3, we're asking ourselves, does 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 21 equals 0? Does 9 plus 12 minus 21 equals 0? And absolutely it does. So that's checking our solution. Uh, for the next six examples, you may want to pause the screen if you'd like to try solving by factoring yourself. If not, I'm going to go over them all pretty quickly. Uh, the important thing of factoring is that you always, solving by factoring, you always need it to equal 0. And you'll see in these two cases here that they don't equal 0 yet. So before I even start any of these problems, what I'm going to do is algebraically, and they should also be in standard form. So ax squared plus bx plus c in the proper order. Uh, so if I put this into standard form, I should have 6d squared plus 7d minus 5, again, now equals 0, critical. Uh, and this last one, if I subtract, 15 quarters, subtract 15 quarters, this side is equal to 0, so I have 1 quarter x squared minus 1 half x minus 15 quarters, sorry for the space here, I'm just going to erase that, is equal to 0. So in this case, now we can start solving uh, by factoring. So in this first example, what we have here, the two numbers that multiply to 64 and add to negative 16 are both negative 8, so in this particular case, we will get the same solution twice, which is absolutely fine. We have x is equal to 8, and we'll also get from this factor here, x is also equal to 8. Okay. Uh, next one. What we should notice is there is a greatest common factor here of just the letter k. So if I divide k out of both of these, I am left with factors of k and k plus 10. And that can't be factored anymore since this is a linear term. So either this factor, which is just k, is equal to 0, so there's nothing to solve there, or this factor, k plus 10, 
has to equal 0. So in this case, k equals negative 10. Uh, next one, we can factor again a greatest common factor out. <clears throat> and we're left with factors of 3 and n squared minus 9. So in this case, uh, n squared minus 9 can be factored further as a difference of squares of n plus 3 and n minus 3. Uh, so our three factors, either 3 has to equal 0, which is just impossible, so there's no solution for that factor equaling 0, uh, or n plus 3 has to equal 0, which would get us a solution of negative 3, or n minus 3 has to equal 0, which would get us a solution of positive 3. So our two solutions for n here are negative 3 and positive 3. Uh, next, in this particular case, what I'm going to do is use decomposition, because this is factoring. There's no greatest common factor, uh, but a is not equal to 1. So this is a difficult problem. So in this one, we want to think of two numbers that multiply uh, to be negative 30, so a times c, and add to be positive 7. And in this case, those two values would be positive 10 and negative 3. So I decompose this to being positive 10x and negative 3x, leaving the 6d squared and the minus 5 alone. Uh, and now what I'll do is factor each of these pairs. I should put the d's here instead, sorry. Each of these pairs uh, factor out the greatest common factor. Uh, so in this first particular pair, uh, your greatest common factor is... 2d, and we're left with 3d plus 5, and our greatest common factor in the second pair, uh, I could factor out negative 1, so that it would leave me with 3d plus 5 as well. So that would leave me with factored form, since 3d plus 5 is being multiplied by 2d as well as negative 1, uh, this is how I could represent it. So there we go. Uh, from each of these factors, what we would get is a solution for 3d plus 5 to equal 0. I'd subtract 5, divide by 3. I'd get a solution of d is equal to negative 5 thirds. You could do the algebra to prove that to yourself. And for 2d minus 1 to equal 0, you'd add 1, divide by 2. You'd have d is equal to a half. Those are your two solutions in this case. Uh, in the next one, what we'll see is a greatest common factor. So just uh, same process over and over and over again. In this particular case, your greatest common factor, it may be useful to make a half into two quarters just so you can make it a little bit easier. It's much easier if we factor out one quarter from all of these. If I factor a quarter out of a quarter, I'm left with x squared. This will be minus 2x and minus 15. Now it's much easier to factor that trinomial as x minus 5 and x plus 3. So either this factor, 1 quarter, has to equal 0, which is impossible, or this factor, x minus 5, has to equal 0, which would give me a solution of positive 5, or this factor, x plus 3, has to equal 0, which would give me a solution of negative 3. Uh, finally, the last one. Again, you may want to pause this and try it yourself, uh, but if not, we're going to move forward. Uh, the last one can be factored again. I would use decomposition in this case. You can use other methods, guess and check, etc. Uh, look at previous lessons for that. I'm going to think of two numbers that multiply uh, to negative 10 and add to negative 9. In this particular case, that is going to be positive 1 and negative 10. Uh, so I'm going to decompose this middle term to be positive 1x, negative 10x, and leave 2x squared and minus 5 alone. Uh, in factoring out the greatest common factor from each of these pairs, this first pair, if I factor out x, I'm left with 2x plus 1. And in the second pair, in order to be left with 2x plus 1, I would factor out negative 5, and that would leave me with 2x plus 1. Uh, so the factored form here would be 2x plus 1 is being multiplied by x and negative 5. Uh, so our solutions in this case would be either 2x plus 1 has to equal 0, which after we subtract 1 and divide by 2, we get a solution of negative 1 half. Or 
x minus 5 has to equal 0, which gives us a solution of x equals 5. Uh, what we could do if we wanted to is graph one of these functions just to kind of show you uh, the similarity between doing this algebraically versus graphically, which was section 4.1. Uh, so if I was to graph maybe this last function on my graphing calculator, 2x squared minus 9x minus 5, let's see what that would look like. Uh, so let me graph the function 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. And I am going to graph it. What you'll notice is that the x-intercepts, if you'd like to calculate them, uh, you will see the same thing. The x-intercepts here are negative a half and positive 5. So those are the zeros, the roots, the x-intercepts, the solutions. Uh, as you can see here, they are negative a half and positive 5. So you can see the similarity between the graph and the algebra, which is kind of cool. Uh, finally, the key ideas for this section, which is a big one, is to solve quadratic equations by factoring, you must make one side equal zero. Okay, uh, it will usually be in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Uh, next, you should factor completely. Thirdly, set each linear factor once you factor it, equal to zero and solve. And finally, you may have to check or verify your solutions.